So Google called OpenAI's recent discovery embarrassing. Let's talk about it. Basically, some researchers at OpenAI, you know, the company that makes ChatGPT, they were essentially talking about how they thought they did something groundbreaking, like revolutionary. They're out here celebrating, popping champagne bottles, and unfortunately, it turns out they basically just used fancy Google search, and I'm not even exaggerating that much. So it starts with this guy named Mark Selk, and he works at OpenAI, and he tweets out this big announcement. He's like, update, me and my colleague Metab, we've been working really hard on this and using thousands of GPT-5 queries, and by the way, and we found solutions to 10 Erdos problems that were listed as open. Now, if you don't know what Erdos problems are, don't worry, I'll explain. Paul Erdos was this famous mathematician who literally spent his entire life traveling around, staying at other mathematicians' houses, and just doing math problems. The dude didn't even have a permanent home, he just lived out of a suitcase and basically did math 24 7. Some kind of mathematical legend, but crazy. Anyways, so this guy came up with hundreds and hundreds of unsolved math problems. Like, these are problems that professional mathematicians have been trying to solve for decades. And some of them have prize money attached. And we're talking thousands of dollars if you can solve them. And of course, these are hard problems, like PhD level career making type problems. So Mark was essentially claiming that he used GPT-5 to solve 10 of these open problems. And he lists them out by number, 223, 253, 339, 494, and so on. And then he says, for 11 more problems, GPT-5 made significant partial progress. He's even calling out specific problem numbers where GPT-5 allegedly helped, like 32, 167, and a bunch more. Now, this part is important. He drops this little bombshell at the end. He says for problem 827, Erdo's original paper actually contained an error. And the work of Martinez and Roldan Pensando explains this and clarifies it. So he's out here not only claiming to solve problems, but also saying he found errors in the original work, which is of course a very, very big claim. Now, here's where we get onto the celebration. Now, another researcher named Sebastian Bubeck, who also works in AI, he sees the tweet and of course, he's pretty excited. He quote tweets it and says, science acceleration via AI has officially begun. Two researchers found the solution to an Erdos problem with the help from GPT-5. And then he adds this little postscript, PS, it might be a good time to announce that Mark Selk has joined OpenAI. So, of course, OpenAI are essentially celebrating. They're using this as a recruiting announcement. And they're basically saying, that look at how amazing our AI is. It's solving problems that have stumped mathematicians for years. And by the way, we just hired the genius who figured out how to do it. Now, here's where the title isn't clickbait and things get a little bit spicy. Demis Sarbis, and this guy is a big deal. This is the guy who runs Google DeepMind, which is Google's AI division and OpenAI's main competitor. And he runs with just three words. This is embarrassing. No explanation, no elaboration. This is embarrassing. So what does he actually mean by this? And when the CEO of your main competitor says something like this is embarrassing, you know something's up. That's like if, you know, Coca-Cola released a new flavor and Pepsi tweeted, yikes. You know something? Those definitely went wrong. So this guy, Thomas Bloom, shows up. And now Thomas isn't some random person. He literally owns and maintains the erdosproblems.com which is the official website where all of these mathematical problems are listed and tracks. He's basically the librarian of Erdos problems. And Thomas comes in with the reality check. He quotes all of these excited tweets and says, hi, as the owner slash maintainer of erdosproblems.com, this is a dramatic misrepresentation. GPT-5 found references which solved these problems that I personally was unaware of the open status only means I personally am unaware of a paper which solves it. And let me translate what he just said into plain English. The problems weren't actually unsolved. They were already solved. Thomas just didn't know about the papers that solved them because he hadn't found them yet. So what did GPT-5 actually do? Well, it didn't solve math problems. It didn't do any calculations. It didn't come up with any new proofs. It just searched for academic papers. That is it. This was like if there was a list of unsolved mysteries and there was one of them that was like what happened to Amelia Earhart and someone was like well I used AI to solve this mystery but all they did was actually find a Wikipedia article about Amelia Earhart that already explained various theories. So GPT-5 basically just did a really 
good literature search. It looked through academic databases and found papers where mathematicians had already solved these problems years ago or even decades ago. And Thomas just hadn't updated his website yet because he hadn't come across those papers. Now, Thomas did, you know, he does add some context here and he says that GPT-5 has been a very useful tool in searching the literature and this has been a valuable addition to the website. So he's not saying that GPT-5 is useless. He's saying it's actually pretty good at what it did, which is searching through a massive amount of academic literature and finding those relevant papers. And that's genuinely useful. If you're a researcher and you want to know if someone's already worked on your problem, having an AI that can search through thousands of papers is of course extraordinarily helpful. But he then says its literature searching ability is already useful and impressive enough, and there's no need to describe it as something it's not. And the translation is basically saying, you guys are overselling this. It's a good search engine, not a mathematical genius. Now, this must be embarrassing for OpenAI. Like, think about it, okay? These are AI professionals, professional AI researchers. This is literally their job. They should know the difference between solving a problem and finding a paper where someone else has already solved it. That's like basic research 101. So before you've claimed something, you always check if someone else has already discovered it. And that's called a literature review. And that's supposed to happen before you make these grand announcements. And secondly, they made this announcement publicly on Twitter where everyone can see it. And they didn't just quietly publish a paper and get corrected during a peer review. They went straight to social media to start celebrating. Third, they use this as a recruiting announcement. Hey everyone, look how smart our new hire is. He used RAI to solve the impossible math problems. And it turns out he just used it to search for papers, which isn't quite the same flex. Fourth, the CEO of the main competitor additionally called them out on it publicly. That has to sting. Demis Asabis doesn't actually tweet much. So when he does and it's to dunk on your company, you have to think about how rough that actually is. And fifth, and this is the kicker. They didn't even check with the guy who maintains the list. Thomas Bloom is right there. He's accessible. His contact info is on the website. They could have sent him an email being like, hey, we found solutions to these problems. Do you want to verify? But I think they just jumped the gun and they went straight over to Twitter. So we need to zoom out because this is the bigger issue in the AI world right now. This is the, there's this massive like hype cycle happening where AI companies, they're all trying to hype up one another consistently. OpenAI releases something, then Google releases something, then Anthropic releases something. And they're all trying to show that their AI is the smartest, the most capable, the most groundbreaking. And in that race, sometimes people get ahead of themselves. They see impressive results and they immediately jump to the most exciting interpretation instead of the most accurate one. Like if you give GPT-5 a math problem and it searches through its training data and finds a paper with the solution, that is impressive in its own way. It shows the AI has good information retrieval abilities. It can understand what you're asking for and you know find relevant academic papers. For a researcher, that's genuinely valuable and it can save you hours of days instead of searching through databases. But there's a huge difference between finding, you know, good at finding existing solutions and can solve previously unsolved problems. One is a useful tool, the other is a revolutionary breakthrough. Now, we do need to give credit where credit is due because what GPT-5 apparently can do well is search through literature. And that's not nothing. If you think about it, there are millions of academic papers out there. And if you're a mathematician and you're working on a problem, how do you know if someone hasn't already solved it? You have to look through the databases, read abstracts, check references, look at citations. It's pretty time consuming. And if an AI can do that efficiently, if you can just ask it, hey, has anyone solved this problem? And it can search through millions of papers and come back with, yes, here are three papers that address this. That's useful. That's a real productivity boost for researchers. And Thomas even admits this. He said it's been a valuable addition to the website. It's helped him find papers he didn't know about and update his database. But again, that's not the same thing as solving the problems. That's finding the homework answers in the back of the textbooks. It's helpful, but it's not the same as doing the homework itself. And remember how Mark claimed that for problem 827, they found that Erdos paper, you know, originally contained an error. This is kind of misleading because GPT-5 found a paper by Martinez and Roldan Pensado then clarified or corrected something. But it's not like GPT-5 did the maths to verify this error. It just found a paper where other humans had already noticed and corrected it. It's like if you, you know, 
claimed you discovered a typo in a famous novel, but you just found some forum post where someone already pointed out that typo. You didn't discover it, you just found the discussion about it. So, you know, sometimes, you know, why do people make these mistakes? I think one of the reasons is confirmation bias. If you're working with a new AI tool and you kind of want it to be revolutionary, you're going to interpret those results in the most favorable light possible. You see it producing papers that solve problems and you think, wow, it solved these problems without digging deeper into whether those solutions were new or not. And of course, there's pressure right now in the AI world to show progress. Investors want to see results. Competitors are announcing new stuff and everyone is trying to prove their technology is the best. That can lead to rushing announcements before fully verifying them. And of course, the last point is that, you know, there's genuine misunderstanding here. Maths is very hard and the database of Erdos problems is complicated. The way Thomas maintains it, open doesn't necessarily mean unsolved by humanity. It just means I don't know of a solution yet. And that's a subtle distinction. And if you're not familiar with how the website works, you might misinterpret it. But still, of course, as professional researchers, maybe they should have been more careful. Well, of course, after this all came out, you know, the tweets uh, surprisingly are still up. They haven't issued a public correction or apology as far as I can see. And the math community and AI community kind of have had a field day with this. People were sharing it around, discussing it. And yeah, it's pretty funny when you think about it because a big tech company makes claims and immediately gets fact checks by the company, you know, slash guy who runs the database that they were using. And I got to say, Thomas handled it pretty gracefully. He didn't, you know, go on some angry rant. He just calmly explained what happened, acknowledged the tool is useful what it does and moved on. But Demis Asabis's this is embarrassing tweet. It got a lot of attention though. People have been screenshotting it, quote tweeting it. And it's actually one of those rare moments in tech where a CEO straight up dunks on a competitor in the most concise way possible. So this point needs to be made. When you see big AI announcements, we actually need to be a little bit more skeptical. Now, this doesn't mean we need to be cynical, but skeptical. We need to ask questions like, what exactly did the AI do? Is this actually new or is it finding existing information? What would a human expert say about this? And second, there's a difference between impressive and revolutionary. GPT-5 being good at literature search is impressive. It would be revolutionary if it actually solved open problems. Don't let hype make you conflate the two. And third, domain experts certainly matter. Thomas Bloom knows Erdos problems inside and out. This is the guy that maintains the database. So when he tells you what's happening, you should listen to him over the tech company that's, you know, trying to sell you something. And fourth, peer reviews exist for a reason. If Mark and Sebastian had submitted this as a paper to a mathematical journal, the reviewers would have immediately caught this and they would have said, wait, these aren't new solutions. These are citations to existing solutions. And that's why we have the peer review system to catch the mistakes before they become public embarrassments. Now, you know, with that being said, there is still real potential in this. AI has made legitimate contributions to mathematics. For example, you know, DeepMind, the company run by Demis Asabis, the guy who called this embarrassing, has done work on helping mathematicians discover new conjectures and patterns. And they've created tools that can suggest potential theorems that mathematicians can then prove. And there's also work on automated theorem proving where AI systems can, you know, actually construct mathematical proofs that's real meaningful work. And yes, literature search is of course valuable. If AI can help researchers quickly find relevant papers, that saves time that can actually be spent on, you know, actual research. The key here is being honest about what the AI is doing and not overselling it at all. Now you're thinking, okay, I'm not a mathematician. I shouldn't really care about this, but remember guys, this is a bigger issue with AI hype right now. Companies are going to continue to make bold claims about what the AI can do, and regular people are supposed to figure out what is real and what is exaggerated. Can AI write code? Yes, but how well? Can it replace programmers? That's another, you know, debatable thing. You know, can AI make art? art? Yes, it can. Or is it just remixing existing art, you know? So there's a tons and tons of things that are going to be confusing in AI, but it's important to remain skeptical. And this Erdos problem is a perfect example. Open AI researchers claim GPT-5 solved and unsolved math problems. Sounds amazing, but the reality was much more mundane. I don't want to be too negative though, because